Okay, so we are live for Migrant Woman Reality Watch number 21. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Fatou. Welcome, Fatou. Fatou is the founder of the Network of Girls Against Human Trafficking in the Gambia. And we are holding this conversation with her because, first of all, Eno is holding a fundraising uh, action for the Network of Girls Against Human Trafficking in Gambia, which we will explain later, and Fatou will give you all the details that you need to know. Um, but the 8th of March is uh, next week, and we wanted to, to invite Fatou for, for this occasion because sometimes here in Europe we don't really have the, the occasion or... Yeah, the visibility to to give to 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 African women. So we're very very happy to have you today. Can Thank you hear you. me well, Fatou? Okay. We also just wanted to to tell the audience that we may be experiencing some technical connections because Fatou is in the Gambia. Her connection doesn't really work well all the time. So if you cannot hear us well, please let us know in the comments and bear with us because we're working with pretty precarious uh, internet conditions. All right. Um, I just also wanted you to know that we will be uh, uploading the, the recording of this live interview on our YouTube channel, which I will leave in the comments. Um, and yes, if you have any question for Fatou, I will also try to address that at the end of our interview. If you can write them in the chat, it would be great for us. So yeah, welcome for Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I will say hi to your audience. Uh, my name is Fatou. Yep, this is really the kind of internet problems that we were afraid of having. I really apologize for the audience. This was kind of taken into account, but of course it's, it's a bit annoying for, for both sides because Fatou really wanted to be here today. So let's see if she can log back in. And if not, we will reschedule this call. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, it's okay. We let the yeah. audience know that this was, was going to happen. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Fatu. I am from the Gambia, West Africa. I am a survivor of human trafficking. Yeah. My name is Fatou. I am the founder of the Network of Girls Against Human Trafficking. Yeah, the only civil society organization that works directly on human trafficking and all the members of the organization are all survivors of human trafficking. And we established this organization in 2000 and um, um, I can say 2017, 18, but start our work, serious um, work on um, 2019. Yeah. Okay, so it's been yeah. more or less two years that things have and been And I will love to tell my story maybe a bit so that the audience will understand. Yeah, yeah sure. What that was actually my, my first question. If you could uh, give us a few words on yourself, if you could tell us how did the Network of Girls Against Human Trafficking come to life? Can you explain to us a little bit uh, who you are, what your network is about, and uh, why did you decide to focus on, on women and girls? I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, and if you can please help me when you're talking, someone can type the question you're going to ask because sometimes your voice is scratching. When you ask it, someone can put the question so that I can understand. I can understand what you're saying. All because right. I am not, yeah, I am, it's just, it's kind of scratching. I am not hearing everything. All right. Yeah. I just posted the question. Maybe you want me to repeat? Yeah, you, you, you mean to introduce myself and the network and how it comes to an, to an existence? Exactly. If you could give us a okay. few words. Oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Unfortunately, I cannot answer those questions for you. And it is uh, it's not my wish at all because I, I want Fatou to give the audience her story. Yeah, my name is... My name is Fatou. I am, again, I am from the Gambia, the founder of the Network of Girls Against Human Trafficking. I was trafficked in 2015 to quit um, ACS, you know. Um, I was trafficked by a cousin's friend and um, a very close cousin friend, you know. She is like a family friend because um, she always be like come to our house, you know, do so many stuff there. But 
she was the one doing it with the husband. But we didn't know because I never know what human trafficking is before. I, I studied pharmacy dispensing assistant in the University of the Gambia and I graduated in 2012. Um, it was so hard for me because it was during the dictator, you know, Yaya Jame. You know, he was a dictator, you know, and when you didn't when you didn't go to work, you know, for, for two, three days, you know, they will not even ask the reasons of you you not going to work. They will just take you and they will just um, um, um torture you, you know, maltreat you, take you to prison without without your family knows knowing what, what happened or also. Okay, I was working, you know, receiving less amount of money and I you know, I then realized that I was adopted and my my mom, I, I have many siblings, you know, my, my siblings are 11 in number. I am the first daughter of my parents and I was adopted. After then I know, you know, I wanted to help them because they are small, you know, they have, they're too young and they, they didn't go to school. With all that thinking and I receiving less amount of money, it was so hard for me, you know, to stay in the Gambia without um, anything, right? I don't know whether you're hearing me. I'm hearing you, yeah. I'm just unmuting myself okay. to make sure that everybody hears you. Okay, yes, um, with, with, with that struggle, with that pain, you know, I see my family struggling, you know, they don't have anything, they don't have money, sometimes even food is a problem. Okay, I analyze all this and I said, Okay, then I know my family and my mom is having 11 kids, you know, my siblings are 11 in number. Why not? Okay, try this. But because the, 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 that sister told me that, okay, I have a job for you in Saudi Arabia. But hearing people, what the people, what the people are saying outside, that when you go there, they maltreat you, they abuse you, they rape you, they do this, they do that. Sometimes they killed you. Okay, I hear all this, these talks and I went, and I went to her and I asked, okay, Aji Fatu, okay, they're saying that this is this and this and this is happening in this in this country. And you said you're gonna help me to go to Saudi Arabia and you have someone who can help me there. She 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 yelled at me, you know, she was so angry and changed her face, you know, with a frown face. I said, No, 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 no need to stress. I am just asking. You are a friend, you are a family friend, you are a family, I can say. I am just asking you, I just want to know. She's like, okay. You know, I will not do that, that to you like this. But in Africa, let me tell you our culture here. We trust that we trust people very easily, you know. And you will never think of that. She can do that to you, you know, as a family friend, as a sister. Okay, I accept. And I said, no, 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 no need to stress. I will accept. I will go. And for, for days, two, two or three days, she came back and told me that, okay, now not, not Saudi Arabia. I will help you to go to Kuwait, the same Asia. I said, why? She said, because their money is more than Saudi Arabia money. Their dinar is more than Saudi Arabia dinar, which is true. The dinar is more than Saudi Arabia. But she was just saying to me, you know, she sold me already without me knowing. Because mm -hmm. I I went with two, two, two other Gambian girls, you know, two other Gambian women. When we go, it was a transit. It's a long, it's a long journey and a long story. I can't set everything here because without moving okay i will just cut it short okay it was a transit from gambia to senegal senegal and ghana we just it was a transit and wherever we go we collect young women young girls you know less than 16 15 18 years you know it was so touching you know but us in the in the in the in the in the plane you know going together we don't even think of that this is going to happen you know until you reach at that airport. When we reached at the Kuwait airport, our documents were seized, our papers were taken, everything were taken to us. Any document we are having was taken to us. But there are there was few documents I was having inside my bag and I kept it inside. But anything that I was having on my hand and everyone were taken by those Arab people. And they were yelling at us, they were shouting at us, they were talking harshly. But we didn't understand the language. But it was by through seeing their body language and their faces, you know that they are saying stuff which is not nice. Okay, now that you know, they we pass through where not even normal human beings pass inside that airport, and they put us in a small room where hundreds of people are there, all black people, you know, all women, young women, you know. We went there almost more than 12 hours, no food, no drink, no water, no nothing. You know, we're sitting there, you know, 
were sitting there, you know, they're shouting at us, they're yelling at us. They will come in and shout, you know, and say something, some harsh word. When you see their faces, you know that they are not saying something nice. Okay, after 12 hours to 10, to 10 12 hours, people will come from the from the airport there come and call names and take you come and call names and take you but i didn't understand the situation until one guy one one indian guy came and called uh, uh, came to collect us and one 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 arab man called our names we three of us and she, and he take us with, with with him i was asking this question where are we going what happened this and this and this but there we are not ready to answer my question but i keep talking because i Fatou, can you hear me? Uh, the if somebody in the we audience. Okay. okay, we went up to the place we are supposed to be. It was a big place, like a mall, office by office, office by office, where they sell human beings, where human beings will sit, and majority are black, where human beings will sit, wear uniform, uniform, can you imagine uniform, a very light poplin clothes, transparent, we wearing that, an Arab man will come, give you money, sign, and take one, give you money, sign, and take one. Sometimes they even touch you, ask how much is she? You know, I was like so shocked, so confused and very angry. I keep talk talking and talking and talking. Um, the owner of the place, the owner of the office come forward and tell me, you have to keep quiet because if you... What she, that what he told me first. And I, I still keep talking. He said, here the citizen is always right. We don't care about whether you create problem or they create problem for you. Here the citizen is always right. I was, I was so shocked. So angry and feeling so much pain. I was thinking different kind of thoughts. Human being treating human beings like this? Is this existing in the world? You know, but mm, the people I went with, the two, two ladies I went in with, they are so afraid. They were like touching me like this. Please, please keep quiet, please. I said, no, I am not going to keep quiet. They need to tell me why I am here for. Because I see these people giving money, signing and taking people. Are we for sale? Are we not human? Why are they doing this to us? These are the questions I was asking and they refused to answer. After then, this same man tell me, tells me that, okay, you don't know what are you here for? You are here, you are here to work as a slave because you are a slave. Mm -hmm. I cried. I cried immediately this man says this because I can't even understand how can you treat a human being like this? You know, it's, it's just you know, it's just really, it's just really sad, you know. And, you know, I, my, immediately, immediately, you know, he, he said that my, my, my life changed, you know. I was like, okay, that this is happening. And, and, and where is human right, you know? Because that country, I know it ha is having human right. Um, human right commission offices there. Then, and these people are treating human beings like this, you know, creating, having offices where everyone knows that they sell human beings and nothing happens, you know. He told me that you don't know why are you here for, you are a slave and you are for sale. I said, I am not a slave. I removed my document from my bag that I studied pharmacy and I am well trained pharmacy dispensing assistant. They tore it. They tore my papers. They tore it, you know. It was like, <laughs> Take your time, Fatou. If you need some time, please go ahead. You know, this is why um, I cannot see, you know, come back to Africa or Tom come back to Gambia or I am alive and, and, and I, uh, it's like I am, 
it's like I'm supporting. I believe that if I came, come back here and be silent to the world, it's like I am supporting these people with their evil things, you know, because people are really suffering in these countries, especially in these Arabic countries, you know, what they are doing to humans is only human. And it's still happening, but, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess that's where your strength comes and that's why you created the network, right? To help people not be in the same situation that you were and to prevent uh, your society no, and the society where you are. You know, I was maltreated, I was abused, I was tortured, I was harassed, you know. I was called names, monkey, you know. And I see, I was so stubborn because I am a stubborn person. I don't accept, you know, taking human like like doing evil to a human being, you know. I was stubborn, but this, at, at the same time, I was maltreated seriously. And I see people are maltreated more than how I was maltreated or in those countries. You know, saying all that, I was, even I was there, I was fighting people's right. But they don't care. As they said, they don't care. You know, you see them, I was, I passed through the jail before I come back to the Gambia. You know, but you see them hanging people to death. Hanging young people, innocent people to death. And nothing comes out of it. With all this, I think that when I come back, if I am silent, it means that I am part of this, this evil, evil deed. I am part of this crime, you know. You know, it's just really crazy. And this is real. This is something happening, you know. And I don't see any crime in this world that is more or worse than human trafficking. That's why this is a global issue. We need to fight this globally so that we end this human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad you came to talk to us today, even though I imagine it must be very hard for you to talk in front of a live audience in front of this. Um, but I don't know, could you maybe try to tell us to, um, why did you decide to focus solely on women and girls? I know that both men and women are trafficked, but the, the, the majority of uh, people being trafficked are women and girls. Is that why you decided to, to focus your efforts on, on, on that side of the population? Breaking. You can type the question through here so that I can be reading it when you're talking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wrote them. I hope you can hear me now. Fatou? Yeah. You can said? you give me? Yeah. Can, did you read the question? I really apologize for our audience for the technical problems that we are having today. Uh, for those who are here often, you know that this is not the norm. I am, now I am hearing you. I can ask your question again. Okay. Why did you decide to focus on women and girls specifically in the Gambia? Okay. Um, since I came back, it was so tough for me. It was so tough and still tough for me. But I decided because of this culture we are having here, the culture of silence, and people discriminate people too much, especially women and girls, especially we the vulnerable. I face a lot. I face more. Uh, I face a lot when I come back here because people don't want to listen. People don't want to believe. They don't even know what human trafficking is. Majority, you know, they they are not even ready to listen because I didn't come with anything. I didn't come with money. I didn't give anyone's money. Right, I didn't. I didn't have anything, and then they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't have. Uh, um, they don't. They don't. They don't have the appetite to listen to me. They are not ready to listen. They didn't believe me, you know. But I keep going. I keep doing it. It, it starts from the family, your own family. When you come back, they don't see anything with with you. They, you don't come with money. The fight starts from the family itself. You know, you are not supported. They don't help you. It gives you more trauma. With the trauma you come with, it gives you more stress and too much pain. But you, you have stubborn someone like me. I call it stubborn. You know why I call it stubborn? Because I feel that in our society, if you are not stubborn like me, you will not move. You will not do what you want to do. They will not even, you know, give you the attention. You have to be stubborn to get, to get that attention from them. This is why I changed myself and being stubborn, you know, to talk to the people, to, to do my media stuff, to reach out to the medias, to the radios, to the TVs, because I went to the government, our own government, I went there to talk to them, to go to the human, 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 human trafficking 
offices, office, the office we are having established since 2017, they do nothing on human trafficking. There will be no case, never, ever since they established. And Gambia is a transit. Gambia is a center. But I reach out to them, still now, up to date, nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing. You know, when they are for, for help, I, I take my trafficker there. I, I lodge a complaint. I take several traffickers there. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I keep on doing what I am doing, you know, going going door to door, talking to people before the pandemic, I mean, since I came, going door to door, doing my sensitization. So now people get to understand and listen to me. And I do my, you know, keep doing my research, knowing about human trafficking, seeing what it, what happens to me is that exactly what I am searching for, you know, and I, and I know that, that this happens to me and I have to tell my story. I have to do this. But since I came back to the Gambia, whenever I tell my story or whenever I talk to people, I have a pain, you know, I have so much pain because of what, you know what, as I am talking to you today, I have a contact of someone trafficking people in the Gambia here. Someone here trafficking people. I am doing all my best. Still now, these young girls are leaving. They're trafficking them without knowing that they're trafficking them. You know? It's really, really, really serious. It's mm -hmm. really serious. What can I do about that? Without the help, help of my people, without the help of the government, without the help of people, some organizations working on migration and human trafficking. But what we see from this organization, just their selfish interest and try and using people. But I don't see any impact that they are doing. Because these are stuff, you know, if I have this information, I have to communicate, connect and collaborate, connect with you people so that we can stop this. If we really, really mean what we are saying to stop human trafficking. It's still happening. As I am talking to you today, maybe some people are leaving this country. Mm -hmm. We can stop. We can stop them, but we if we don't have the materials, the mechanism, the instrument, what we use, what should we use? Like I should be protected, but I am not protected. Mm -hmm. How can I help others if I am not protected as a survivor? If I am always abused, always discriminated, always harassed by the by the society, my by my own people, the society, our our system. Reaching out to people, they take you as an enemy. Reaching out to the government, they take you as an enemy. Few people in the government. And at the end of the day, I will blame the president. Maybe the president didn't even know what is going on. People I am reaching out to are fighting me because I am talking about it. They think that I am an enemy. I am here to compliment their efforts. We are facing a lot as a people, as a survivor, and as, as a nation. We, have, we need system change, but this system, you know, is just really crazy. Okay. We keep blaming each other. We don't want to listen. That is our problem. That is our problem in Africa, not only Gambia, but in Africa. Like people like me, you know what pains me when I what pains me when I was there. When I was there, I once called my family to tell them what I am suffering there. You know what they tell me when I said hello? It's me, Fatu. Okay, Fatu, you are there and you don't want to walk because the one who trafficked me, that cousin's friend, tells them she find a job for me and I don't want to walk. They don't even listen. I was shocked from that day. I never talked to them. I talked to them only once. Mm -hmm. Only once. Yes. Look at that trauma I, I went through. That pain. I called, struggled and called. All our telephone, telephones, our, 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 our internet, our everything were seized. Sometimes you never talk to your family since um, until your contract finished or maybe when your contract finished, they end up killing you. I talked to you once. I called. You know, Patient is number one. We lack of this in Africa, you know, and poverty really disturbs us. Poverty is our main problem. Exactly. Because Fatou, can you hear me? You're, you're expect, expecting me to bring money, but you don't want to listen my to listen what is happening to me. You don't want to know what is what I am going through. You just want me to send money. Mm -hmm. This is our problem. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. It seems that one of the best ways to to get girls and women into this system of human trafficking is to to exploit their poverty and to to ex to take advantage of the the poverty situation that that you are in. 
because in your case you you could step up but there's some like you said you you were you're talking your documents were taken you were in a, you transited some countries where you didn't even know the language you are isolated from other people you are put in little rooms so this all goes it all results in the fact that you are totally isolated as a as a victim and you cannot even do anything to to help the situation they don't allow you to eat the food they buy for the family even the ones you're using to cook for them you don't eat from the food they they, they cook sorry from the food you you cook for them from the, it's just really what is happening in these arabic countries what is happening when these girls are trafficked is horrible and it's still happening and as i'm talking to you people are suffering till date you know mm -hmm. sometimes you don't eat from morning to night when they see you open the freezer to take only one thing one food to eat is a problem you mm -hmm. they don't care what they tell you is i paid you some of them they don't pay pay them M most of them sorry they don't pay them you know and mm -hmm. you end up eating every day you know mm -hmm. one day there was this day um, um when i was working in one house one compound there they have almost seven to seven to ten story building you know what um, and one of them, because they, you know, when, they sleep, when, when, when some of some are sleeping, others wake. When some are sleeping, others wake, and they don't allow you to sleep until all of them went to bed. And when these ones are sleeping, these ones are waking up. How? When? When are you gonna sleep? You walk twenty four hours without no rest. You know, you walk twenty four hours. Okay. One day, I was at the top working at the last floor, working upstairs. Someone is down. They just click a button. Click a button to call me to run, and I will not use the lifter. I will run like a slave and come bring only one thing that they need from the freezer or from the table near 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 them, near them. But I have to go from the last floor up, come down with run. I I have to run. What kind of maltreatment is that? How heartless people are, you know? Mm -hmm. I cannot even still understand this. Mm -hmm. It's still new to me, you know. It, it, whenever I think of it, I am I am traumatized. I am I am I am pe with pain, and everyone is being silent, not talking about it. It needs to stop. It needs to stop. It's happening, you know. Mm -hmm. Modern day slavery is still happening, and it's getting worse every day. And as human right. To be honest with you, we need to do something. We didn't. We didn't start yet. We definitely need to do some something. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me, Fatu? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I wanted to ask you how when you went back to the Gambia. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. So. Hmm. Fatou, can you hear me? It's off again. Hmm. Let's hope Fatou can log back in again. Fatou, are you there? I am here. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I wanted to I wanted to ask you how how did you get the the other girls that now are part of the network of, of girls against human trafficking? How did they get to know you, and how are you working together today? What are you doing in the Gambia? yes um yes um how do I get to know them? Um, you know, I was I was in the Arabic countries, and I have all that experience, and I know obviously there are many people suffering from this, and I get to, to realize that it's not only where I am; it's around Asia, the whole of Asia, Africans. Hmm. As I said in the beginning of the live. I hope our audience bears with us because Fatou has limited internet connection. I get to know that um, um, many people are suffering from this, but still, I didn't know what human trafficking is when I was there. Because I start my activism inside the prison when I was prison there. You know, I was prison. I was prison there 
you know, just because I don't want to do the work, you know. And I, they said I have to pass through the prison before I come back, you know. Um, through through that, I know I started my activism in the prison in in the in the in the, in the country itself. The, the very day I, I I know that this is not normal, you know. Through that, I know then there there are, there are many people suffering from this, and I started communicating with different different people, you know. When I come back to the Gambia and I do my sensitization, I use the internet itself. That's why, for me, I don't know who, but for me, social media make, I make use of being on social media because social media makes me to know what exactly I am fighting for, what exactly is happening around the world, what exactly I should do to try be part of those who can make this world a better place to live. Okay. I use social media to tell my story, cry, and use all platforms, all platforms, because I, 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 because I have a pain, and I know many people are suffering from it, and they are keeping it. I use my story to help people. I use my story to teach. I use my story to sensitize. I use my story to raise awareness. I use my story to make young women and girls learn from it. Because of this, people keep reaching out to me. I, because whenever I use social, all these social media platforms, I send my numbers. Because through that, I get contacts. People keep calling me. People keep messaging me. I, I, I communicate with them and I ask them, you know, what happens to you? We, we met. I don't care. I, I meet people. Even if I don't have transport fare, money to, to be transport and go, I can walk from distance and go just to go and meet you, talk to you. And, and I, then I realize that you are, you, are, you are a victim or survivor of human trafficking. And I join you, join you with, with my organization. And sometimes, sometimes I ask for some evidences, some papers, some documents. Some will have it. Others will not have it. Others will be taken by the immigration yeah, I will do my investigation and get those from it and, and know whether she is a survivor of human trafficking. That's how I connect with them. That's how I we form this organization and be as one to the um um to be an ex like to be exist uh, to be to exist now. Yeah, this is this is how I I, I form them. That yeah. Okay, and yeah. obviously one of the reasons we invited you today was because we want to help. Uh, we want to help your organization grow in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so we are hosting this fund fundraiser on this platform uh, called GoFundMe. So you can buy uh, some digital material for the girls, and you can keep on working on on their yes. digital skills. But could you maybe now that you are here live, you can explain better to the audience. Uh, exactly what is the work that you do with the girls and what will the money uh, that they are contributing with be helping you out with? So you could, if you could give us more details and talk more about what are your hopes uh, with the money that we, that we will hopefully raise all of it for you. If you want me to write on the chat, let me know. Yeah, um, if I can understand your question. Um, you know... Um, Many of these survivors, they didn't go to school. Some of them, they stopped at grade five. You know, some of them, they stopped at grade three, grade two. Majority of them, you know, I can say 75 or 80 percent of them, they didn't know anything about the social media, internet, phone stops. But I am, as, um, as you see, I, I do most of the work. I do most of the work, you know, almost everything. Because... I try to, um, in the sense, teach them and show them what I am doing to make them be strong, advise them, talk to them, to tell them that they should not be sh ashamed. But make, still, the trauma is in most of them. You know, they, they are ashamed, you know, because of the family itself, the society and what they are going through, you know. But some some are there who are willing and ready to talk. Because always, I don't force people. I do, I, I do my... I do my I do stuff for you to see what I am doing. If you want to join, you join. But I have some of them who are messaging me that they want to do it. Then I have to. I am, I am always trying to teach those people, make them believe in them, themselves, and being strong to come out and do do as I am doing. Because I I always make them believe that if we don't come out and tell our stories, if we don't come out and do what we're supposed to do, then we are not helping the society. We don't have to be ashamed for what they did to us 
they did that to us. We are not the one who did that to them. But because of the, the culture, as I told you before, because of the culture, it gives us more, you know, trauma, more stress that it even makes us that we don't want to come out and, you know, and talk to the society and talk to the people, you know. But um, we want to buy um, laptops, maybe four laptops, yeah, four or more, if we can, we can get it from the amount of money we are, we are asking the audience and others to donate if we can get that we, we will buy um, um um four laptops because i am using my phone to do this today since i started my my work you know on, on human trafficking and other stuff you know as a as an activist i use my phone to go in social go into social media and do my work i use my phone on everything you know which is very hard for me because it, it it really it really disturbs me because I don't have the, the 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 support I need. That's why I am using my phone, you know. And we we definitely need any support that we that we can or that people that people can support us with. We definitely need it, you know. We are asking anyone who who can donate to please donate on that link and help us get what we what we need because we want to keep on you know raising awareness you know supporting the this, the, the, the victims you know helping them with their needs because they definitely need support they definitely need help you know everyone will not have will not will not have the opportunity to get that laptop because not all of them or not majority of them cannot use the internet cannot use laptop itself some of them don't use phone you know but I, we will use it so that we can be While I'm waiting for Fatou to come back, I'm leaving uh, the link for the audience for the for the fundraising here in the comments. Yeah, with, with, with those laptops, with those laptops, we can we can we can use it. We can use it and communicate even if we are at home. As this pandemic, you know, we, we, we do so many things at home. We, we, we do our work, work at home, you know, through the Internet and other stuff. But we need we need more support. We need more support. We need more support, definitely. We are love mm -hmm. of the support, you know. We uh, definitely need support, and the, and the best support they need is um, um 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 protection, you know. Protection number one, you know. Encouragement number two, you know. Um 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 um, you know. Any 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 type of su support, I mean, because you know it's really frustrating, you know. Mm -hmm. How many, how many girls are you in association right now in your organization? How many girls regularly come or maybe not so regularly, but how many girls would you say okay. that are interested in the activities? You mean how many of them? How many of the survivors are in the, are in the organization, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We ha I can say we have more than 100 since 20... Since we started this work, we have more than 100. But as I told you, because of the culture of society and family, you know, some, some will go and will not come back. You know, some will go and come back because of their afraid. They're still afraid because they didn't get, they didn't get the support and, and people are discriminating them and harassing them. You know, I cannot force them to stay because I don't have nothing to give them because we don't have that support. They... Since these people came, since these survivors came back to this country, they have been telling them that we will, we will give them support, we will in, reintegrate them. Still, no one received a single dollar from, from anyone. No the government, no anyone, no organization. But these organizations are using them, you know, using them in their activities, putting them on social media, you know, making them to fight, to, uh, making them to fight the organization that they come from because of only when they take them to some workshop or take them to some stuff, they give them less than $1 or $2, you know, is they're using them. They're really using them. You know, they're not supporting them. But if you don't know your right, if you don't know what you're doing, it's always very hard for you. I try my best to talk to them. I try my best. But some of them listen, others didn't. But later on, they know that what I was telling them is true. They will come back and tell me, Fatu, definitely you, you are telling us the truth. These people, they always use us. You know, there is an organization. I can give you, an, uh, you know, there is an organization who take one of our victims and, and put a billboard. You know, billboard? Pull, put her on a billboard. Without without her consent, mm -hmm. you know, 
I come up on social media and talk about it. The next day, they went and removed it. They went and removed it. Is that fair? Image is very expensive. That girl is suffering, you know? That girl is really suffering. She is the one helping the family. She is not working. What do you expect her to do? Mm -hmm. She might go to the street again, or, or she might go to the street, or she might be trafficked again, I can say. You know? To just to get something to, to help. You are not helping them and you are using them. These are these are things that some of uh, some organizations are doing. Some international organization who comes to this country or who, who comes to Africa saying that they are they, they are helping why they are not helping. You know, mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. doing this to, to these things. I am their enemy because I am I am telling them, them the truth. If you want to use use me, I will use you. Use me, I use you. But you cannot put me on social media. You're using me and you, 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 just to gain something, and I am not gaining anything from it. It's not. It's not. It's not good. This mm -hmm. is what I, I, they are doing to these survivors. Or mm -hmm. most of these survivors are suffering because of these organizations. You know, mm -hmm. they are putting them there on social media. Everyone thinks that their lives are good, while they they are really, really suffering. Some of them don't even have where to stay. They always call me for help. Mm -hmm. Someone who cannot help herself, how can he? How can she help you? Okay. This is the situation we are. In. It seems that the fundraiser will help both you and the girls because you're already in a precarious situation while doing all your best to help out and to raise awareness in, in every way that you can. But you yourself need tools to do that, and I think the the four laptops will be. I hope, hopefully, we can we can get them help yeah. you support in that. And that even way you bring yourself rest. Yeah, ahead, even please. if we can get more than that, that would really help, you know, that would really help, you know. We definitely need support, our self-support, because most of them want to do something. They don't get the finance, financial support, you know, to do what they want to do to help themselves and their families. This is the main problem, you know. This is the main problem. Mm -hmm. We definitely need support, but the best support is encouragement. And others come comes comes next financial you know and and other things. But if you don't give them and if you don't encourage them, they will not believe in themselves. They might be vulnerable again to be trafficked, you know. And some of them ask, you know, they you cannot tell, I cannot you know. I wish people know what these girls are going through. I wish people know what exactly is happening. Some of them are trafficked again. They trafficked some of them again. Mm -hmm. Yes, some of our victims, some of our our members, our sub, the survivors, have trafficked. And they trafficked them again. I know some of them who are trafficked again. Mm -hmm. Because so things are obviously go. not put into place, so that uh, these girls are not put into vulnerable situations again. Obviously, the the main reasons why they are trafficked so, in the first <laughs> place are are not addressed at all. Yeah. I am talking and I am I am I am putting my look my language there. I, I sometimes I forget, <laughs> but it's just really crazy, you know. It's 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 really 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 frustrating, you know. We definitely need to need to do something on human trafficking. Gambia should do something on this, you know. We have an office called Net National Agency Against Trafficking in Pasi, a government institution, you know. I cannot tell you what these people have been doing. I work more than these people on human trafficking. I personally do more than... These people, they are not even doing a bit. Mm -hmm. Every year, every year they went to one border post. Can you imagine? Every year to one border post to sensitize. One single, one single border post. They are mm -hmm. not using social media. They don't, have, they don't have any social media platform. Just look at that. They create a small group because of what I am telling them every day that you have to have social media. You don't even have, I always call their name that they open a group. Can you imagine? Not Facebook page, a group, a group, a one group. And, and they don't allow any, uh, they don't allow people there. Only the tax force. Only, I, I, I wouldn't even call them a tax force. Only few people. You know, only 30 some, I think 30 something people. And if even if you search it on, on, on Facebook, sometimes you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Recently, not long ago. Then how are these people helping the society? Mm -hmm. What are they what are they doing to support and help the society? Mm -hmm. A government to choose on established since 19 Chombolo, but they are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I, I know this maybe not make you feel better, but here in Europe we, we also have the same issues and that's why 
most trafficking, I mean, that's why most women organize at grassroots level and engage in a feminist way of acting because it's, it really takes into account all the analysis that is needed for to tackle these kind of issues because it's just not enough to raise awareness. Obviously, you have to put structures into place, you have to put protection of the victims, you have to make sure that they are not re-exploited and they are not uh, retaken to to these countries of, of transit and, and destination. And that's obviously a lot of hard work that is needed for women and means are not made necessary to it so of course this does not make you feel better but just know that it, in europe or in the most developed world let's say i am not here you're not I hearing not. i'm sorry it's, it's, it's crap. yes it's okay any question you can type it and you you can talk but at the same time type it so that i can know okay yeah. i just wanted to ask you a last it's question scratching. can you hear me now yes Okay, I'm. I'm wondering if we if we get the money that we are aiming at, how do you imagine your organization to be in, let's say, one or two years? How would you want it to be working? Do you you talked about a shelter? You mean you mean with the three thousand? Yes, beyond. What is your vision for the organization, and what would you really like to see happening in the Gambia, if you have the financial means to do so? If I have the if we have the financial support we need, human trafficking will be really tackled in the Gambia, to be honest with you, and mm -hmm. around the world. We will start from you. You start from your home. We will start from our home. We will make sure human trafficking will be seriously tackled in the Gambia. Like we will do whatever we can, you know, to control it. We will do whatever we can to stand and fight it seriously. You know. If we get what we need as an organization, human trafficking will be really tackled. We didn't get what we need. We are not protected. You know, we are abused every day. You know, we are harassed. If we get the financial support we need, definitely I promise everyone watching, everyone watching now and later, that human trafficking will be really, really tackled. And the, the world will learn from us, I can say. They will really learn from us. And we will be you know we will be together with in, um in this fight it will really tackle we want to end it we want to end it we want human trafficking to be stopped not only gambia but everywhere but we first start from our home yes okay thank you fatu for sharing everything that you've shared here today i know it's difficult but i am I'm really hoping that our audience can can support you and share massively the the campaign, and hopefully help you women and girls in the Gambia put uh, some structures into place so the tackling of human trafficking is is underway. Do you have maybe any last words for the audience? Are you talking to me? Yes, <laughs> I was wondering you, if you, you had what? any last words for the audience before we finish. Okay, what I have for the audience is wherever you are, you can do something on human trafficking. Wherever you are, do something on human trafficking. You can write. If you cannot write, you can talk. If you cannot talk, you can do action. If you cannot do action, you, you can do anything to save someone. You don't know whose life you're going to save. Let's discuss about human trafficking. Let's talk about human trafficking, you know. Let's gather. Let's, let's talk to our kids. Let's, let's talk to family members. Let's talk to our neighbors. If we don't talk, if you don't talk to your people, if you don't talk to people, you, you cannot know, you know. Do research, you know, because human trafficking is real. This is something real and it's not a joke. It's a criminal act. It's an evil act existing and still existing. And still, and it is expanding. We're thinking that it's reducing, but it's adding up, you know. And women are vulnerable, you know. It's just something that we all, as a world, need to join hands, you know, discuss with one mind, one voice, you know, we fight against this evil act because human trafficking is real. Say no to human trafficking, let's end it, toge let's end it together with one heart, you know. Together we are strong. This is the message I have for them. Thank you, Fatou, for ending this on a really strong message.
Thank you. Um, I left the, the link to I the have... to the comments here. Oh no. Anyway, to the audience that is watching, I have left the link uh, to the fundraising here in the comments. We've also been sharing it massively on our social media. So make sure that you follow us in every platform and please make sure or please consider donating to, to the campaign of the Network of Girls Against Human Trafficking because obviously there is great help needed and I think some material advancement needs to be taken place. She is back. I was revelating that my internet is not my internet is not finished, but it it is is scratching, it's giving me a message that it's gonna be finished maybe in a few minutes or you know, yes. We will be finishing I so now. So my, I complete it without me too. I'm going to leave you yeah. now so you don't waste all your data on this interview. Okay. Thank you so much for, for making that thank sacrifice you. and for taking the time. Thank you for having me and I thank you people. European network of migrant women, I can't pay you, you know, I can't pay you enough and I can't thank you enough. I just, I am just saying thank you. I know you thank people you. know, thank you. And I really <laughs> appreciate it. And my, my members appreciate it. You do, you know, amazing work. You know, we are here to, to support each other. And whenever you need us, we are here for you, you know. And, and we will send you everything that we buy from that money or what we do with that money. You know, and we are, and we give you the hundred percent permission to post it on all your social media to show people that this was worth it and it's something that we really needed as survivors. Thank you. Thank you, Fatou, and send a big hug to all the to all the girls there in the Gambia from the European Network. Thank you for watching the audience and thank you so much for, for bearing with us uh, with the connection. As I said before, you can check this recording that we will be uploading later on our YouTube channel. We also left the, the link to the fundraising in all of our platforms. So make sure that you log in onto that and support in any way that you can. And see you next time for another Migrant Woman Reality Watch. Bye. Have a nice day.